Hi guys, welcome back on my channel, Dorota Palicka International, nail artist and educator here. And today we are going to do a beautiful set on my nails. You can have a wee look in here. I hope you will really enjoy this tutorial. If you do and you, you're new to this channel, hit the subscribe button. If you're existing as a subscriber, hit the notification bell uh, so you don't miss any future tutorials from me. Also, thank you so much for all your likes, shares, comments and the big support from the memberships as well. I really appreciate that. But let's start doing this beautiful set. can see it on those nails they finish and that's what we are going to do it is kind of an unusual shape for me because usually I'm wearing a coffee in this hand it's not finished yet but I will show you how to recreate this look so I'll just quickly dehydrate my nails uh, with the blue scrub and then we can start fading so on this one we will go for the blue green and then green blue just so you've got two different ones actually i show you the color i'm using is a pastel blue and then the green one is oh my goodness meow dream i have no clue how to pronounce that and they're really nice colors they from the neon nails the only trouble is the coverage isn't great um so like i find it sometimes even three layers are needed for some of the colors. I just really like this shade. So I'm just painting half of the neon in the blue. And you can see it, I have created kind of a triangle shape, just so it's easier to blend. This green actually has a better coverage can see it is not as see-through. I'm not going to be bothered like to blend it perfectly just because we are putting so much design and then those white bits and pieces which looks almost like a snake skin. And then using the ombre brush we are just going to fade it a little bit. So what I'm doing is almost trying to don't touch like just a little bit of the strokes to blend that out. Because this gel polish is um, kind of watery, the sponge technique wouldn't be a use for that because the sponge would just absorb all the gel polish. So probably three to even four layers would be needed with the sponge technique. And then straight away to save the time, I'm going to do it opposite, so green. The green is much more pigmented as you can see it. Again, kind of V-shape. And then blue. Sometimes when I'm working in a salon, I would just clean the brush. I would just go and use the brush. Actually, I might show you on this new as well. It's just much quicker, I find it. So I would remove the excess of the gel polish and then I would just go like this. Okay, so that's the first layer. There's lots of places which are still see-through. but We are going to perfect that after the second coat. What else you could do is take a small brush and tiny bit of the gel polishes you have used it to make it nice and clean around the cuticle. So I just put the drops of the gel polishes on the mixing palette. Then going with the blue. 
Like I do really like when the gel polish is everywhere. And then green. Just to tidy this up. And then put it to the lamp. We can also start preparing our white mixture just to save the time when we're curing. So again, the paint on French. And this is the gel I'm like using constantly. It actually took me a couple of days. Like I, this Niels, uh, that's the stiletto ones which I was wearing. So they about, what, maybe a week, week and a half. I can't remember when we put the video. But yeah, they, they've been on for a wee while. I just changed the shape. Uh, so I cannot call it even like a certain shape. I just on something different with it. Then I'm just putting a tiny bit of the white and old top coat. So the old top coat is this one. So I've got a tiny bit left of this top coat on the end and this top coat we will be using to create our milky white. So I put the drop of the top coat and I'm mixing it with the paint on French. I have tried doing it with the white gel polish, but it wasn't as uh, pigmented, so the results was not as strong visible. So I'll just put it on the side. Actually, I can keep it as a milky white. So this layer is cured and I can move on into the second layer. So ideally to get a really nice coverage with the blue, we should go three times and the green is much more strongly pigmented, looks better. So again, I'm going kind of V-shape. And yeah, coming back to the shape of the snail, so uh, they were, have been those long stiletto and then I have just shortened them and give them kind of like a sharper point. But they look kind of like a gothic almond, but I wouldn't call it because it's too tapered look, so... I've got some fly flying here. <laughs> I'm not sure if you've seen it on the camera. So that's the green. And now I'm going to blend it. So I'm starting a little bit higher where the blue is so I can pick up a tiny bit of those blue on my brush and now start mixing it. The second layer always looks much better. But I've got some gel polishes from the Upvoted uh, and they are so perfect for an um, ombre technique with the sponge because of their pigmentation. And I will show you guys like and some maybe on the tips like how to do the sponge technique as well and tell you the difference like what kind of gel polishes needs to be used with the brush and when the sponge technique is best. So depending on the product we use. Okay, so this one is faded. Now I'm going into the next one. Then on this hand we will have some nice blue meals. I don't know why I pick up those colors. Maybe because normally isn't the colors I would wear. And because we are on this lockdown, no one really see my hands. I'm not dressing up like super fancy or whatever. So I just wear 
mix and match on my nails. But I quite like this combination of the color, like on the nails itself, if that makes sense. Maybe not to wear myself, but just like as a set of the nails, I think it's pretty nice. Okay, and then I can put it to the lamp to give it a cure. I like the middle color, the I would say turquoise one, which came up after mixing the blue and the green. Yeah, I'm desperate for my lashes, desperate for my roots. I think I will just attempt to do it myself. I've done it a few times some time ago just to kind of blend it, it out, but now they are getting huge. <laughs> And yes, on this hand, we'll do some blue nails with a blink, probably. And I will, like, I don't know, I will think something of on this hand for a different tutorial. Again, working with two different hands, something a bit unusual. Okay, so the nails are almost cured, and now we can move on into doing the design with the white. So that's my milky white. And then on the side, I'm going to put a drops of the top coat because we are going to need that as well. So the top coat on the side and then cuticle, no, the dotting tool. <laughs> So if this one was going on this side, here we will go on the other side. So what I'm doing is I'm, I have picked up those milky white. And I'm just applying this milky white. into some kind of shape. Now I'm going to take a small brush just to perfect this shape. Not that this is going to be really visible, but I just like to make everything nice. So that's kind of certain shape and then let's do actually do it one uh, let's no do it one by one so swap on the cotton's nails just because it needs some time for the droplets to work so i just taking my dotting tool now dipping it into my uh, gel polish top coat and i'm just going to place some dots so basically you're just touching and placing dots. Actually a full nail would look really nice like this as well. Don't try to make them too big because uh, by the time you put it to the lamp you can see it how it starts to spread. So we'll give it a couple seconds until you're really happy. So I'm just going to wait maybe one more, two, three, okay, a couple seconds more. Because you can see that the top coat is pushing the white, creating a really nice design. Okay, I'm happy with this one. I'm going to give it a flash cure and then we will do the second one, uh, second one because otherwise the dots which are spreading on the first one will be bigger than on the second one. So I'll just freeze that out. And then here, I'm going to go like this. Okay, and I'm going to take a small brush just to perfect that. Got some flaps there. And 
And you could make it with any color, like you could make it with black, you could make it with white, blue, just any color. Add the drop of the top coat into that. But the more highly pigmented it is, the better results you will get. And then dotting tool, and we're going to paint the dots. Don't place them like in one line. What you can see, I'm placing them kind of in between. So I've got two dots, then the next one will be more in the middle. Then I've got one here, one there. Okay, wait a couple seconds for it to spread nice. It looks pretty nice on its own as well, like if it would be a full neon or neater design on it. But because we are putting all those on top of it, I'm um, kind of just doing a tiny bits and pieces of this snake skin design. Okay, a couple seconds more, just so it spread nicer. Maybe touch up this line so it's not as strong. And add one more dot. Okay, now I can cure it inside the lamp. So I'm going to give it a full cure. And in the meantime, again, just to save the time, we are going to put some foil design gel. And that's what I like to use as my black. Gosh, this is so risky opening the gel up close to the lamp. <laughs> Don't do that. And I'm just going to put it on the side. And then using the painting fine liner brush, we are going to do the design. Also, a good tip for you as well. When we cleaning the brushes, the base gel is pretty a good one to clean the brushes. The top coat usually makes the brushes harder and the gel base is making it softer. So I'm just cleaning my brush, getting nice tip. <clears throat> and I've got my paint prepared, so you've got two options. And like on this new, this part is underneath of the top coat, while this part is on the top of the top coat. Here, you can see this one is on the top of the top coat, so it's kind of matte look, and I definitely prefer it. So we are going to do it on top of the top coat. And yes, it is not going to come off. <laughs> Because lots of you will probably ask about it. So I'm just putting the high shine no wipe top gel. And that's another reason why I like those paint on gels. Uh, they do stick in even like normally the gel doesn't stick into the shiny surface. You need either a rough surface or you need inhibition layer like a sticky layer for the product to stick in and don't peel off. So that's pretty important when we're even doing the designs that you either use a matte top coat or the surface surface of the neo is scratched or has an inhibition layer. Why for this gel, we can apply it, it on top of the shiny top coat and it's not going to come off like, I mean, it took me really long time before I recorded this tutorial. So I was scared this uh, neos will be wrecked in the garden as well. Like and I will make them dirty, but they're actually still not too bad. And no, it is not going to come off. So I've got a nice and thin brush, and now we are going to paint those design. Okay, nice and thin brush and now let's work out the design. So we need to kind of connect that all 
and I will be starting from here. So dot and a whistle. Okay, and again, I need to put maybe some lifts in here. So I'm picking up a wee blob on the end of the brush, press it harder than lighter. Now I can join. I just grab that. I can join them up and prolong it. This is really easy way to paint like a nice shape leaves. And if we have one leaf here, we can make another one in there. They kind of look almost like a butterfly wings. We swirl. Then I'm missing something on this side. And now I can give it a flash cure so the product doesn't run, like, um, or I don't smudge it, or in case I don't like some future design, then I can easily wipe it off. Okay, that's it freezed. And we can continue painting. So press it hard. Then if we've got like a, some sort of leaf shape, we can prolong it and it looks much nicer. Let's do the same in here. Hard press, then very gentle. And then prolong it so it looks like a leaf. Okay, I don't want to overdo it. Mm. I definitely need to place something in these places here, so... Let's do it this way. So I'm going to do press hard and then light again to create a longer line. Okay, and then make a lift. Do the same in here. Okay, so this way it looks really really nice and I don't want to cover any more of this white we just need to add more detail here and it needs to be a little bit heavier so we are going to do the leaves and now checking the design so some leaves will fit in nicely here and they could fit nicely there and yeah I could go like those kind of way so I need to make a wee stream So there is like some point where I can start something. Tree long it as a leaf. Mm. 
And now I'm adding smaller leaves. Okay, and then once I'm happy with this, I can prolong them. We can also paint something here. I've got all the images flying here. It's harder and lighter. And I will show you also like we have created the Swiss swirl and now I'm going to join and prolong that up so you can see it each time I'm just making it longer. And again longer. And again longer. And now we can create leaves from that. So I'm just turning the hand. And make a leaf. So I'm starting always from the bottom, letter C, letter C, and a wee twist. Missing something there. Prelong it. I quite like this white part, so I'm not going to hide it. We are going to make something here. Clean my brush and my product on the tip of it. It's kind of difficult uh, when you have to keep the hand on the camera focus. Normally you just go all different angles, like whichever is comfy for you.
See, I don't like this one. So if I would flash cure it and I really wanted to do it, I would be I wouldn't be scared to wipe it off. Now I have to be very careful to don't damage the other parts. And because it's so close, the best option is just to use some cleaner brush. Dip in and then use the dehydrator to clean it up. Let's give it a flash cure. So if we make the mistake next time, we can easily wipe it off. Okay, let's check. So yeah, I just want to squeeze something out in here, so. That's better. So I'm just going to flash cure it again. The reason for a flash cure is because I want to stick in a couple of the gems and the caviar beads like I did on the thumb. Not sure if you see it. And then that's this design finished. So I think we're going to go for some blue. And my crystal gem and a circle base. So I'm just taking the circle base, applying a tiny bit on the side. My thin brush. And I'm just going to place the crystals in here. Not many, just a couple, because the design itself is really rich. So what I want... Oh, I know which one I have used. <laughs> it was a kind of citrus ones with the hint of the blue in it. So depends how the lights shine on it. It shows either a yellowish or blue. And then let's do got a couple of this ones. They kind of similar color, just a smaller ones, but I have no clue what the color was it. I really have no clue. Placing crystals is always so time consuming, but pretty relaxing. I also want to use some caviar beads as well. So I've got the crystals done. Not going to apply anymore and then the caviar beads so we'll be using some smaller and bigger ones that's the tiny ones and that's the bigger ones so 
So I'm taking up a little bit of the base again. Actually, maybe I'll just pick the bigger ones. I think the caviar beads just finish off the, the crystal placement. And I was really scared to use them like the way how they're going to come on, pick up, how they're going to last. And with the base, they do really last. Like I had um, some previous designs for many, many weeks. So normally, I had also a question like how long the nails last me. So normally, I do them, I would say, every five five to six weeks. And on the lockdown, I do them much more often because I have no salon tutorials for you guys. If you find that the beasts are moving too much, just freeze it under the lamp and then you can move on and apply more. I'm going to place one in here and two more just on the sides. Come on, separate. One. And the second one. So it's not overly too much of the crystals, just a tiny bit and just on the middle finger so it matched the thumb. And yeah, that's actually this tutorial finish. I hope you have really enjoyed watching it. And it's something slightly different, like normally I'm more kind of nude colors, pinks, black, white, silver. Um, I don't wear many of the colors, but during the lockdown, I even had purple nails. Can't believe, like, first time ever in my life. And it will be a second time in my life when I have a blue nails. First time in the life when I have something green on my nails. Uh, so yeah, <laughs> I've been like challenging myself. Just I thought it's a good time to show you complete something completely different, and uh, that's the final results. I just need to clean up and apply the cuticle oil. Well, I quite like the snake skin and the combination of different things. They look quite nice from the side view as well. <laughs> so. I hope you have enjoyed watching this tutorial. Uh, yeah, let me know down in the comments below what you think and which combination you prefer better, the blue and green or green and blue. Um, I'm waiting, looking forward to reading them all. Thanks guys, glittery hacks and bye for now.